you may not understand what I'm doing right now, but you will. And that's what I would say to everyone. You may not understand what I'm doing. And this gives a little bit, maybe we're like 20% there, but there's still going to be people. We leave this interview and they're like, I still don't like the way you apologize. I still don't want to say what my involvement would have been to make him lead him to that point. And we just want things to be how they are. There's people in the world who want the world to stay as it is. And there's people who want to change the world. And that's happened throughout time. They say that with Da Vinci halfway into a conversation, he could not suffer fools so much that he would walk away halfway into the conversation. And I said, well, that's why it's the Da Vinci Code and not the Da Vinci world. And every time I go and piss off a group of people or do these things, on some end, it's like I could be turning my thing from a potential world vision to a code or I could be opening up conversations with new friends that I may trust someday. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> that that because the change you will have on the world that you don't know for sure, but it'll happen across uh, years, even decades. So you have to think in the future. Like you're working in the future. Your actions are working in the future. That story about Da Vinci alone is enough of a reason for me to give a sincere apology to the Jewish people, because I do believe that there's a Da Vinci code inside of all of my misspellings and scribbles right here that God wants me to get to the world. And when I'm in my way, if God has set something on me, when I'm in my way, I'm in God's way. Now I can point at other people and say, hey, you guys are in God's way because you're not listening to me. But if I'm in my way, I'm not listening to God. And for me to be a philosopher and a leader, whatever other language, I have to listen to God. 